Hi, my name's Andy Sykes. I'm an illustrator and animator, and I teach animation at universities here in the UK. Why not check out my website, hexjibber.com, where you can find animation and illustration by me, as well as more lessons in Flash and After Effects. Cheers. Hi, welcome to another tutorial in my series of lessons on how to animate elemental effects like water and fire and smoke. This time I'm going to be looking at how to create a water ripple. In the past we've been using an effect in After Effects called Wave Warp, but this time we're going to be using an effect called Radio Waves. What Radio Waves does is it generates a pattern of concentric circles emanating from a central point which is exactly what you need for things like rippling water. So what I've done is I've created a template in After Effects and I've then exported that as a loop and traced over it in Flash. So I recommend you check out my introduction to Wave Warp tutorial so that you can get an idea of how I've done that before you proceed with this. So let's take a look at the result I produced in Flash. Here we go. So you can see we've got these concentric circles are coming from this center point and we've got this really nice continuous loop. It's in a limited style so the frame rate's quite low so it will fit in nicely with 2D stylized animation. So if you're doing anything anime style or kind of traditional 2D style this would fit in really nicely with it. If you're looking for more complex water simulation I recommend you look some tutorials in 3D uh, using more complex techniques. This is a very stylized technique. So let's take a look at how I've done it. Again, if you don't know After Effects, please do check out my After Effects tutorials, which go through all the basics that you would need to do this tutorial. You can check them out on my website, hexjibber.com. So first up, we're going to create a new composition. We're going to make it 1080p at 25 frames a second. You could do it at 720p if you wanted. That's totally up to you. I'm using 25 frames a second because I'm in Europe, but if you're in America, you could use the 29.97 preset instead. Okay. So next up, I'm going to make a solid. I'm going to right click here and go new solid. I'm going to make it white. Click OK. Next up, we're going to go to the effects and presets and we're going to type in radio waves. You can see we've got this effect which is in the generate section. We can drag that over to our white solid or we could drag it down here onto the actual layer. And it looks like nothing's happened, but if I scrub through the timeline, you can see that we're getting these concentric circles like so. So I don't want them to be blue really, I'd rather they were white. So I'm going to go over to my effect controls here. I'm going to choose white and click OK. Okay, next, let's have a look at some of the options within this Radio Waves effect. You can change the producer point if you want. That essentially just moves it around in space. We're going to ignore this parameters are set at function for the moment. Render quality 4, you can bump it up to 16, that's the highest value. We're going to ignore wave type for the moment. In the polygon section, you can control how many sides curve size and curviness you have. You can turn your shape into a star if you want. You could have something like this. Do kind of quite trippy effects with that. You can change the star depth and create very strange effects. And you can animate all of these using the stopwatch here. You can also do some other really cool stuff. You can bump up the curve size and the curviness. You can get something that looks like this. Very interesting. You can see that that's now coming out of that center point. I'm going to reset all of these values because at the moment we do just want a nice circle. So there we go. I'm going to close that up. Uh, wave motion, the frequency is how often the waves are produced. The expansion is how far out they go orientation doesn't really matter too much when you're dealing with a circle the direction again doesn't matter too much when you've got a perfect circle it's not going to make much difference the velocity is how fast they go so you get this kind of 
quite odd effect where they're shooting out from the center. That might be useful for bubbles, perhaps. Spin, again, it's not going to affect a circle, really, because it's such a perfect shape. Lifespan, if you turn that down, you can see that the circles are going to disappear more quickly. They're going to fade out. So that's quite useful when you're doing ripples. So down here in the stroke section, we've got various different profiles which you can use, uh, which affect the quality of the stroke. So there we go. I'm going to leave that on square. And you can change the opacity, the fade in and out time, and the start and end width. So now we've taken a look at the options. Let's make our layer 3D. And we need to do that so we can get this angle as if we're looking down on the ripples. This is a notoriously difficult thing to draw by hand because you've got to try and draw these concentric circles in perspective, which is quite challenging. So I'm going to click this 3D layer and then I'm going to press R for rotation. And in my X value, I'm going to make it minus 75. There we go. I'm just going to move it down a little bit. Again, if you don't know how to do this 3D stuff, check out my After Effects 3D lesson on my website. So now we can see we've got these concentric circles moving out like so. So now we've made this 3D, I'm going to show you what settings I've got in my radio waves effect. I've got the render quality set to 16. I've got 64 sides. The frequency is 1.5. The expansion is 9.10. The direction is 90 degrees. Spin is 2. The lifespan is set to 2. The profile is sine because I thought that gave the best line. The color's white, opacity is one, fade in time is zero, fade out time is five, the start width is 42.8, and the end width is one. So it tapers off quite nicely as the strokes disappear. So we've got this really nice animation here. One problem I've got with it is that these lines look a little bit too perfect. They don't really look like the waves that I've got in my animation. So if you look here, you can see those waves are a little bit more kind of wobbly. So one of the other cool things you can do with this effect is you can use another layer to determine what these circles look like. So I'm going to create a shape layer and I'm going to draw a circle in it. So I'm just going to draw a circle, making sure that I don't have my white solid layer selected. So I'm going to draw a circle. I'm going to make sure that it doesn't have a fill. And I'm going to give it a stroke of white. I'm going to turn the size of that down quite a bit. There we go. And I might use my align settings to just whack it right in the middle of my composition. There we go. So what I can do to this shape is I can add an operand. If you don't know what an operand is, check out my lesson on shape layers in After Effects. And I'm going to use this operand wiggle paths. If I turn off my radio wave, I've now got this nice wiggle on my path there. So I can change the wiggle path options. I might want to change the size so that it's a little bit bigger. So something like 23. I'm going to change the detail to 26. See, the further we shove it up, the more complex those shapes become. I'm going to make the point smooth instead of corner, so we get that nice kind of wobbly effect. And I'm going to change the random seed down here to 41. So you can see the more we shove it up, the more randomized it gets. So there we go. So we've now got this really nice, interesting kind of wibbly shape. So what we're going to do next is we're going to rename this shape layer Wiggle and we're going to jump into our white solid. And if you can remember earlier, we looked at this wave type being polygon. Let's change it to image contours. And when you do that, you need to choose what source layer you want those image contours to come from. So I'm going to choose Wiggle. And then if we turn off Wiggle and turn on white solid, you can see that although our animation's gone a bit wonky, we're now getting these interesting wobbly lines coming out of our center. 
So if you get a result like this that looks a bit strange, you'll see this little dot here that represents the source center. And you can just drag that right to the center of your layer like so. You can see up here we've edited these values. So really, they want to be the same as the producer point. So we can make it 960 and 540. And that will be exactly right. Next up, you can see that these waves look all the same all the way through. So I think what we want to do to get a more interesting result is change the parameters from being set at birth to being set at each frame. So as it animates, it updates each frame of this wiggle and uses it in the actual animation. So we get a more interesting result. It's really up to you which options you use, but I think this gives the best result and looks the most interesting. So the last thing that we have to do is find where the loop is in this animation. It's certainly not going to start at the beginning because you can see we start off with a black screen. So we need to find the point where it loops from where everything is on screen. So I think we're going to start off with somewhere around here where we can see there's a dot in the middle. We're going to pull the work area up to here and scrub through a little bit more until the next time we see that dot. There we go, somewhere like that. And let's see if that loops. I'm going to click on RAM preview. There we go, we've got a perfect loop there. Really nice and easy and it's about half a second long. So just before we export, we need to apply a posterized time effect just to kind of limit the frame rate of this animation. So I've started typing in posterize. And I'm going to drag posterize time onto my white solid layer. And I'm going to set the frame rate. And I'm going to set the frame rate to eight. This is the frame rate we've been using for most of the other examples in my elemental series. So now let's play it through. You can see it's juddering a little bit. So maybe I'll just pull the beginning of the sequence forward very slightly. Let's try it now. There we go, we've got a perfect little loop there. Marvellous. So we're ready to export this as a PNG sequence. Let's just show you how that's done. So we can go to Composition. If you're using After Effects CC, you can add to the Media Encoder queue. If you're using CS6 or below, you can add it to the Render queue. So I'm going to add it to the Media Encoder queue now. And now it's popped up. I'm going to choose PNG and HD 1080 25 sequence. Then you can just choose where you want to save it and press Play. It will save that out for you. So I'm going to go into the version I've done in Flash already. Let's take a look. So here we are in Flash, and you can see this is my finished piece of animation. I've got my original PNG layer here. If I turn everything else off, you can see there it is. We've just got a few frames. It's actually only one, two, three, four, five keyframes. And I've made the last keyframe four frames long and the first keyframe only two frames long so that it goes from going very fast to slower as the ripples spread out a bit like they would in reality. What I've got is a background layer which is just a gradient going from light blue to dark blue. If you don't know how to do gradients check out my lesson on gradients in Flash. Next up, we're going to look at this waves layer. We're going to ignore the shadow layer for the time being. In that waves layer, we've got a graphic symbol. And within that graphic symbol, we've got our radio waves kind of trace. So what I did is I drew over the After Effects template in white. And then in a separate layer, I added some extra detail. So. I was looking at a lot of Japanese art and Japanese woodblock prints and their depiction of water, particularly those by Hokusai. And I looked at anime and how they depicted water. Because you can see the trace on its own looks a bit bland. It doesn't look very engaging or realistic. But when you add some extra ripples, you get a much more interesting effect. 
And it's important to try and keep those ripples consistent. So what I did is I drew them all as drawing objects and then I'd copy them into the next frame and I'd scale them up so that there was a consistent shape moving out from the center to the edge all the way through. Consistency is really important in animation. If you just had random shapes, it would be very hard for the eye to track them moving. So you can see this shape here becomes this shape here. And then in the next frame, it's disappeared. You can see that these ones on the outside are breaking apart, so they're not a consistent line all the way through. As those waves have lost their momentum, as they're moving outwards, they kind of dissipate and become smaller. And again, we can see the recurrence of this ripple getting ready to loop back to frame one, where it's getting bigger. So it's really a case of you adding some artistry and flair to this template that you've created in After Effects. After Effects is really good at figuring out the loop, figuring out the maths, and Flash is a really good place to just kind of use your drawing skills to touch it up and make it look more interesting. So, I mentioned this shadow layer. All I did was I made a copy of the graphic symbol in my waves layer, and if we just click on it now, you can see that it's the same graphic symbol. I've added a tint of blue and I've just slightly offset that symbol. So it's just a copy of the same graphic symbol, but I've moved it down slightly so it gives this illusion of there being a slight shadow underneath this sea foam, which makes it pop a little bit. Certainly it makes it stand out from the blue background. So there we go. That's how to create a ripple using After Effects and Flash together. Have a go yourself, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Hey, thanks for checking out this tutorial. Next up, why not take a look at my website, hexjibber.com, where you can find out more about my self-published books, the Hexjibber Coloring and Activity Book, and the Hexjibber Anti-Revision Book. They're both suitable for kids and adults alike, and are well worth checking out.